Welcome back to Teaching from a Distance. If this is your first time joining us, my name is Danielle Polk and I am a literacy coach. In today's episode, we are jamming with Jamboard. Jamming with Jamboard. Jam, 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 Jamboard. Jamboard is Google's answer to an interactive whiteboard. And you can use it just in the same way that you used your own interactive whiteboards in class. You can use it to work through a mini lesson, to demonstrate equations. You can use it during read alouds. You can post anchor charts and work through those. You can use it for annotation. You can even post them as an assignment and have your students use them in a collaboration discussion. So let's get to it. Since Jamboard is a G Suite application, we can find it by clicking on our waffle and then scrolling until we see the icon. It looks just like that. So when we click on it, our new window will open up and our saved jams will be stored here. To create a new jam, we're going to click on the orange icon at the bottom and it will open up into a new screen. It'll take a second to load, but once it does, you'll see that it looks like a blank slide or even a whiteboard. Jamboard will give you two frames. However, depending on the scope of your project, if you need more, you can add more frames just by clicking on the arrows. And you can see that they are numbered over here. If you need to get back to your other frames, you can do so by clicking on the left arrow. You have a toolbar up here. We have an undo button, a redo. We have a zoom feature to change the size on the screen, and we can even change the backgrounds. So this is a really cool feature because we can add dots, we can add lines, we can add graphing, and even in different colors. So let's set this to clear and go over the tools. We have a pen, marker, highlighter, and brush option. This is a great option if you have the Jamboard app stored on your phone and you can use your finger, or if you have a tablet with a stylus, it's easier to write. But if you're really handy with your mouse and you can write, you can go for it that way. So you can see we have different colors, different thicknesses for different purposes. Okay. We also have an erase feature. So you can click on the erase button and go over what you need to go over. Or we can just clear our frame. The sticky notes option allows you to neatly type notes and pin them to your board. When we click on the sticky notes icon, you'll see that they appear and we have different color options. So this is a really great tool if you're organizing or categorizing or annotating. We can set our notes to clear and we can type our notes and pin them to our board. We can make our notes, we can move our notes wherever we want. We can make them different sizes or rotate them. We can edit them or duplicate our slide and we can delete it if we don't need them. So this is a really fun function. I love sticky notes for organization. Um, whenever we want to pin a sticky note to our board, we have to type something in it. So we can do that just to make sure that they're there and they stay in there. And then that way, if we send this out to our students and they need to type onto that sticky note, they can click edit and they can type their answers or their notes as they need to. We can double click on it to change our sticky notes as well. The add an image option is really the heart of the Jamboard. We can upload any file from our computer as long as it's saved as a JPEG. We can also do a Google image search, upload from our drive, or add a photo. So let's take a look at how we do that. Let's say that we're working on a slide and we want to add that slide to our Jamboard. I'm going to go into my slides because my saved presentations are here, and I'm going to select my annotating the prompt exercise. I want my students to annotate their prompt, so I'm going to select the slide that has the prompt on it and download it by going to File, and then Download as a JPEG image. It will then, we can save it, and then it'll download and show up at the bottom of our screen right here. I'm going to go back into my, my Jamboard, and my file selection is here, and I can drag and drop the image 
right into the box and it'll upload directly onto my Jamboard. From here, I can change the size of it and move it around so that it's easier for my students to see. If I'm working on this in Google Meet, I can have it right here and I can do this exercise in real time. I can change my notes and add directions. I can edit my slide so that we have directions. I'm going to use the tools to annotate our prompts. I can use my pen feature to demonstrate what I want circled. And we can save it and share it. So we can also, again, erase whatever we're doing if we need to. And then we can share this out to our students. We can also screencastify this exercise simply by doing what I am now by recording our screen, or we can save this jam. I'm going to save it as annotating the prompt just by clicking on it and renaming it. And then we can post this to our classroom and add it as an assignment. So I'm going to select my classroom tool, go to the classroom that I want to add this assignment for, create the assignment, and then add it right from our drive. So just remember, the last thing that you create is the first thing that shows up in Recent. So I can select my jam and click Add. So here my students can view the file but not edit it, or I can have them edit the same file and put them into groups, or I can have all 25 of my students edit the same file, or I can make a copy for each student and grade the assignment individually. So once I have my selections, I can then assign it to my class. Another way to use Jamboard is in Google Meet. You would use this by sharing your screen during your Meet session. You can also record your Jamboard or your demonstration using Screencastify and post that as an assignment as well. And thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any comments or feedback, please feel free to drop a comment in the box below, or you can email me at dpolk at carneyschools.com. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time from a distance.